I've had quite a few comments over the last year or so asking me to make some content about the calendar app for iPhone, but rather than simply making a step-by-step -step guide of how to create an event, which is essentially the only thing you're gonna use the calendar app for, I figured I'd instead make a video showing you all of the different, and in some cases, unusual ways that you can use the calendar app on your iPhone. If you've wanted to make better use of the stock calendar app on your iPhone, you should definitely stick with me until the end of this video, as I think even long-term iPhone owners will find that they weren't aware of a couple of these tips. Okay, let's get into it. You can create calendar events at the touch of a button directly from an email. So let's say for example, that here in this email where we've been offered a few different dates and times to set up a meeting with someone, we want to pick one of them and create a calendar event for that date and time. Rather than manually creating an event and then filling in the date and time information that we want, it's much quicker and easier to click on the corresponding date and time option in the email. You can see that we get a few options. We can create a reminder, which isn't what we want, but it's good to know that we can do that if we wish. Instead, we want to choose create an event and doing this will load up a brand new calendar event for us, but with all of the necessary information preloaded, such as the date and the start time. All we need to do is adjust accordingly and then save. Let's say that you've got an event in your calendar, either one that you created or one that's been created and you've been invited to, and you want to create a reminder to carry out some prep work before the meeting, maybe a day or two before. Most people would, I think, just open reminders and create a reminder the manual way, but there is a better way. Open your calendar and tap and hold on the event, then immediately move your thumb or finger a little to drag the event on the screen. Still holding your thumb or finger down on the screen, swipe up to close the calendar app with your other hand, then open the reminders app and go to whatever reminders list you want to be in drag the event to a blank reminder. You should see this little green plus icon and then let go. You've now got a new reminder, but importantly, it's linked to the specific calendar event. So you can now complete the reminder information, choosing the day and time that you'd like to be reminded. And when you've done that, notice how if I tap on the calendar icon, it takes me right to the corresponding event. This way, if there's any information you need from within the event, you've got easy access to it without having to root around in your calendar. As with all things on iPhone, if you find the manual way of creating and managing events difficult or frustrating, why not try using Siri instead? It's really easy to use Siri in conjunction with your calendar, but you need to know what to ask it. With that in mind, here's a few phrases you can use. You can create a new event by saying something like, create a new event next Monday at 1 p.m. And when Siri asks you what you'd like to call it, you'd say the name. So in this case, I might say team meeting. Then perhaps I'd like to change the meeting from next Monday at 1 p.m. to tomorrow at 2 p.m. I could say to Siri, reschedule my team meeting. Then when asked for the new time, I'd say tomorrow at 2 p.m. If I wanted to cancel the meeting altogether, I'd simply say something like, cancel my team meeting. And if I wanted to see what my meetings were like for the remainder of the day, I could say something like, what's the rest of my day looking like? And Siri would show me. You can create an event right from live text. And thanks to the latest iOS update, iOS 16, this will work both in images and in video, so long as you pause on a relevant frame. So here, for example, I've got a gig poster and you can see that down in the bottom right of the image, when I'm viewing this in my photos app, we've got this little live text icon letting us know that our phone has detected text. If I tap on that, you can see that the phone has detected a date. And if I then tap on that, my phone will create a new calendar event based off of that date. If you ever find yourself working on a note on your iPhone and you realize at some point that you could do with creating an event related to that note and you don't wanna lose all of the information that you've collated, you can simply create an event from the note. It isn't obvious at first how you do this as all of the sharing options from notes are related to things like reminders, but here's how you can do it. First, create the event in the calendar at whatever date and time you'd like, but don't fully save the event. You need it to be in the edit screen like we've got here. If you're working on an event that you've already created, just ensure that you press edit before going any further. With that done, head back into notes and locate the notes that you want to add into your event. Tap and hold for a second, then immediately move the notes around so that it looks like this. It takes a bit of practice to get this right. 
Then swipe up with your free hand to return to the home screen and open the calendar app, which should already be on the event that we want in edit mode. Then simply drop the note into the notes section of your event. All of the written content from the note will now be pasted into the event. When creating an event, you'll notice that there's an option called add attachment. This could obviously be for adding a file that's useful to you, or it could be for a file that you want to make available to the other attendees who will be joining your meeting. You've got a couple of methods of getting this into your event. If you tap on the add attachment button, your iPhone will take you to the files app, but it is possible that you might not want to add a file from the files app. And if that's the case, here's what you would do instead. With the event open and in edit mode, let's swipe to close this down. Let's say that the attachment we want to add is an attachment that's been forwarded to us in an email, maybe this PDF file. Tap and hold on the file for just a second, then move around to shift the file into drag mode like we've been doing already in this video. You're definitely getting some practice at this if you're following along. Keep your thumb or finger down on the file and with your other hand, swipe to close mail, then open calendar. If you need to return to edit mode on the event, just tap edit. Otherwise, scroll down to add attachment and drop the file there. The file is added to your event, making this a really quick and easy way to add files into your events. If you're enjoying the content here, why not consider signing up to my newsletter, The Proper Weekly? I include some tech news from the week, a behind the scenes of what's happening here on the channel, as well as a short guide for a product in the Apple ecosystem. I send the newsletter out each Friday, it's free to sign up and the link is in the description of this video. The Shortcuts app, which I've covered at length in a separate video and will include a link to in this video, does have some calendar related shortcuts which might be worth your while checking out. To view them, open the Shortcuts app, then tap on Gallery down here at the bottom right of the screen. In the search bar up at the top of the screen, type in Calendar and then at the time of making this video, there is actually a collection available called Put It On The Calendar, which is essentially a curated list of calendar related shortcuts. Tap into that and you can see if any of these would be of use to you. There's a shortcut here that will automatically email you a copy of your schedule for the day, which could be a good one to run first thing in the morning if you're especially busy and want to have a view of what you've got coming up. There's a shortcut to see how long it will take to get to a meeting or view the details of the next event in your calendar, as well as a shortcut to let people know that you're running late. You can add a shortcut to your shortcuts by using the plus icon next to the relevant shortcut. And if you're unsure of how shortcuts work and want to know more, be sure to watch my introduction to shortcuts video next. You can create a shared calendar. There's loads of reasons as to why you might want to do this, but from my own personal experience, my wife and I use this function all the time. It means that both of us can view our joint schedule to see what we've got coming up. We can both add in and edit events and it really cuts down on the likelihood of either of us double booking. This is a two step process. The first step is creating a calendar, although you can use an already created calendar if you'd prefer. If you're creating one from scratch, open your calendar app, tap where it says calendars down at the bottom of the screen, then choose add calendar. Choose add calendar from the options here. Give the calendar a name, choose which account you'd like to add it to and assign it a color. Choose done. Then back on the calendar screen, tap the eye icon next to the calendar you just created or the calendar you'd like to share if it's an existing calendar. Tap into shared with, then locate the contact you'd like to share the calendar with. When you hit done, that person will receive an email with a link that they'll need to click on in order to join the calendar. But once that's done, you'll now both have access to this calendar and can both edit, add, delete and view any events. A handy little setting, which I only found out about when researching for this video, is being able to display the week number in your calendar. To enable this setting, open settings on your iPhone, then scroll down to calendar. In here, ensure that week numbers is toggled on. Then when in the calendar, you can see the week number here when in day view. But if I scroll back to view the month, you can see the week number here. Handy information to have, I think. Not sure why Apple wouldn't enable this by default, but there you go. Also, it's worth quickly bouncing back to settings to show you some of the other things you can view or edit here. You can choose alternative calendars, Chinese, Hebrew, or Islamic here. You can choose default alert times, the day of the week that you'd like your week to start on in your calendar, and things like the default calendar. 
First party widgets are still a bit lacklustre on iOS in my opinion, especially the calendar one, but it's worth knowing what they are and how to access them. As a reminder, a widget is a small interactive version of an app that displays on your home screen. To add a calendar widget from your home screen, tap and hold for a moment to go into the brilliantly named jiggle mode, then tap the plus icon in the upper left of the screen. Scroll down to calendar and you can see that you can choose from multiple sizes of calendar, each showing you different things. There are three sizes of up next available, then a month view, which I quite like having on my home screen, and finally a list view of your upcoming events. Once added, the widget will of course display relevant calendar information, and if you tap on the widget, you'll be taken right into the calendar app itself. By the way, a bonus tip, I get asked all the time about the calendar widget that has appeared in loads of my previous videos. It's actually an app called Fantastical, which is really good. I do make use of the free version. There is also a paid version, but even on the free version, you can access this excellent calendar widget. So there you go, the calendar app for iPhone and a bunch of ways in which you could start making use of it. How about you? Any calendar hints or tips that I've not included here that I should have? Drop me a comment and let's talk about it. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.